Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. In this video, we're going to be talking about the spinal accessory nerve. So this is cranial nerve number 11. The spinal accessory nerve is a motor nerve. It's purely motor in function, and it really just innervates two muscles. Uh, one of them is listed here. This is the trapezius muscle. And then this one right here, which is actually running up the length, up to the mastoid process right here, this is sternocleidomastoid. So those are the two muscles innervated by the spinal accessory nerve. And I should actually put in there that this is the sternocleidomastoid. With the exact nature of the spinal accessory nerve, this really calls into question the exact definition of a cranial nerve. So what is a nerve? Well, remember a nerve is really just a cluster of axons uh, that's outside of the central nervous system. So these cranial nerves, they are outside of the central nervous system. So when I used to think about cranial nerves a long time ago, I used to think, well, they're just either nerves that originate from some part of the central nervous system, like the midbrain, pons, or medulla oblongata, or they originate in a special sensory area like the eyes or the nose, and they run directly to some part of the brain. All right, so here's really the definition of a cranial nerve. Listen up. It's a little bit different than what you might have uh, heard in the past. So a sensory cranial nerve is a cranial nerve that runs from some special sense area generally, like the eyes, the nose, and it runs into the cranium. Okay, It has to penetrate through the skull somehow, usually through a foramen, to get to the brain. If you are a motor cranial nerve, you have to exit the cranium. Okay, If you look at every single motor cranial nerve, hypoglossal, Vagus actually has some motor in it. It's mixed, but it has motor. If we look at oculomotor, every single motor nerve exits the cranium in some form or fashion. Every single sensory nerve is going to enter the cranium through some foramen, and mixed nerves have both. Okay? The spinal accessory nerve actually originates from the spinal cord. So therefore, the definition of a cranial nerve can't be that it originates from uh, the brain. Okay? because the spinal accessory nerve, as you can see right here, actually originates from the spinal cord. If you look at these roots really carefully, you can see them coming up off of the spinal cord. They're really originating actually between the levels of C1 and usually C6 or C7. Okay? So these are the spinal accessory nerve rootlets. And you can see that they merge into a spinal accessory nerve. All right. Now here's the interesting thing about the spinal accessory nerve. Unlike the other spinal nerves, which generally either go laterally at the same level or they descend, the spinal accessory nerve decided to be different. And it's going to ascend upward, and it's actually going to ascend through uh, the foramen magnum. So this space right here between this bone and this bone right here in this picture, this is the foramen magnum. And of course the spinal cord descends inferiorly uh, through the foramen magnum to get into the vertebral column, right? So here, here's the foramen magnum, right? The big hole in the base of the skull. Well, it turns out the spinal accessory nerve actually ascends up through that foramen magnum. So how does that fit the definition of it has to exit the cranium if it's a motor cranial nerve? Well, it turns out that the spinal accessory nerve, for whatever reason, after it ascends up the foramen magnum, it just simply turns around and then descends out of the cranium. And this space where it actually descends through, this uh, foramen, this is the jugular foramen. And it's not the only cranial nerve that descends through the jugular foramen out of the cranium. It's also with the vagus nerve, cranial nerve 10, that you can see right here. Also, cranial nerve number 9, the uh, glossopharyngeal nerve, also goes with these. So there's actually three that move down through this jugular foramen. Cranial nerve 9, which is glossopharyngeal, cranial nerve 10, which is the vagus, and then cranial nerve 11, which is right here. This is the spinal accessory nerve. So is a cranial nerve something that originates from the brain or goes directly to the brain? No. And in terms of a motor nerve, for a motor cranial nerve, they are not nerves that originate from the brain. That is not their definition. Their definition is they just simply have to uh, descend or exit out of the cranium. They just have to exit the cranium. Spinal accessory nerve is actually just a bunch of spinal nerves, okay? Um, it originates from the spinal cord. However, when they fuse into the spinal accessory nerve, they move up through this foramen magnum, turn around, and, and descend out through the jugular foramen. So because they descend 
out of the jugular foramen and therefore exit the cranium, they therefore satisfy the condition to be a motor cranial nerve. Okay, And again, you can follow this as the spinal accessory nerve uh, descends out of the jugular foramen. You can see it's going to give off motor branches to sternocleidomastoid first, um, and then it's going to continue on and run underneath trapezius. So trapezius is obviously a back muscle, um, upper back. If you actually take trapezius on a cadaver and reflect it back, uh, you'll actually see the uh, spinal accessory nerve running underneath it. So it actually runs um, actually anterior to, or we could say deep to, the trapezius muscle. And so it innervates both of those. So very important nerve, and actually if you have damage to one of the spinal accessory nerves, you're going to have uh, ipsilateral issues in both the sternocleidomastoid and the trapezius. So for example, this right here is the patient's right spinal accessory nerve. If this nerve was lesioned or cut in some way, um, then the right sternocleidomastoid is going to fail, and then also the right trapezius will also fail, and you'll tend to have atrophy of both of those as well. And so with a right lesion of the spinal accessory nerve, uh, you're going to have inability to elevate the right scapula, since that's the major function of trapezius. Um, there will be some other manifestations as well that have to do with the trapezius, including severe atrophy of it. Also, um, since the sternocleidomastoid's function is to rotate the neck in the opposite direction, so in other words, the sternocleidomastoid on the right would rotate the head to the left, the patient with a lesioned right uh, spinal accessory nerve will have weakness rotating the head to the left, but not to the right since the left sternocleidomastoid would still be intact. So sternocleidomastoid facilitates contralateral rotation, Trapezius is ipsilateral scapular elevation. And so you might actually be able to rule up a lesion to the spinal accessory nerve if you see both of those clinical manifestations. Uh, but because of this setup right here, um, it's going to be an ipsilateral issue for these two muscles. Okay. So hopefully this video not only gave you an understanding of the spinal accessory nerve, maybe a little more detail than you'd known in the past, maybe it cleared up for you the actual definition of a cranial nerve, and I hope so. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.